The experiments you are about to see are very dangerous and were done just for educational purpose, so please don't try this at home. Question, what happens when you power a flexor actuator with 30 volts? Testing in 3, 2, 1... I'm not sure how toxic that was, but I think it's better if we run the tests outside. Shit, that's on fire. All puffed up just like a lipo battery would. <laughs> you can also see the copper inside. Okay, so here's what I think is happening. As you know, flexor is a two layer board, so at 30 volts, I think the dielectric layer is literally melting, which forces the layers to short and lower the resistance even more, which means more current is pumped into the system, increasing the temperature even higher. The small pitch of the coil also makes it super easy for a layer to get shorted. The next thing I would like to understand is at which voltage this happens. So I have set up a new flexor and we're going to increase 1 volt at a time. Okay, so we're currently at 6 volts and the maximum temperature is around 140 degrees Celsius. Let's go to 7. I'm starting to smell things burning up and at 12 volts the temperature is 273 degrees Celsius. Let's go to 13. Okay, so at 16 volts you could already see the cell screen changing color. It's happening, it's happening, it's happening. The current is 0 0.36 and we're at 19.5 volts. Now every PCB I tested so far got puffed up like a pillow. So I wonder what would happen if the PCB had some kind of hole in it. Okay, so this is a brand new prototype I got a few weeks ago, which we'll be testing in a future video, but for now, let's just blow it up. It's hollow PCB testing in 3, 2, 1. So that was a little scary, the fire got delayed. The only difference that I could see is that the PCB got curvy instead of puffed like a pillow. The next thing I'm curious about is what would happen if we test a 4 layer and a 6 layer PCB. Both of these flexible PCBs have a lower resistance, so things should be interesting. This is 4 layer test in 3, 2, 1. Disappointing. Let's try the sixth layer. Okay, that was a little more energetic. I thought that these were going to get more damage. I mean, they're still doomed, but they didn't catch on fire or anything like that. The last item on our menu today is a PCB motor to see if there's any difference between FR4 and Flex. My test leads got a little damage, so please excuse my crude setup. This is Delta PCB motor, 30 volts test in 3, 2, 1. Ay, ay, ay. Turned from red to black. That's so cool. The copper tracks are just peeling off. Now the question is, can we start a fire with the small flame? Before we test this, I would like to talk about this video sponsor. 
all these projects I've blown up were designed using Altium Designer, which is the industry standard for PCB design. It is the perfect circuit design tool for both beginners and professional engineers. Their online viewer allows you to share the real-time state of your project with team members, manufacturers, and even customers. Get started now by going to altium.com slash yt slash to download the software and get a free trial. Now all these tests were just a stupid experiment because PCBs are not meant to catch on fire but maybe there's some application where this can be used as a one-time electronic fire starter. To prove this concept I first tried to burn some tissue paper. I'm not sure if it's because of the wind or anything like that but the first two tries didn't work. On the third test we got fire. For the last test, I try to burn a spark there. <laughs> so that's it i hope you enjoyed watching me setting my projects on fire like i said do not try this at home i only did it for educational purpose just to try and understand what is the limitations of these pcbs in fact in the next week's video i'm going to try and use this heating property for a specific application so if you don't want to miss that video please click subscribe and ring the notification bell see you soon